Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is Watson Michael from Ceylon Institute of English and Leadership. And once again, we're glad to have Dr. Gary DePaul back with us. Right, so he is the Executive Leadership Development Consultant at Gary DePaul Leadership, and he's a Distinguished Principal Research Fellow at the Conference Board. Also, he's an adjunct professor for the Department of Educational Leadership at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. And um, Gary, welcome yes. back. And how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Glad to be here and glad for a return visit. Absolutely. So uh, let's start uh, with our first question. And today, like, um, why did you name the book? What the heck is leadership and why should I care? Yeah, this is a really unusual book, mm. and the title is very deliberate. Yeah, I use I use the phrase "what the heck" intentionally. What okay. the heck is American sl is slang? Yes. and it's it's like what is? I could have said what is leadership and why should I care, but I use "what the heck" because leadership is one of those things that if you ask someone, yeah, what what's leadership? They yeah. would say, I know what it is, but I I can't tell you what it is, but yeah. I know it when I see it, you know? Yeah. So that's that's what I, I use. What the heck? Like, what is this thing called leadership? And it's really to convey that I'm going to explain what leadership is and why it's important for individuals to develop their leadership capabilities. Yes. And that, that was the focus of the book just to do that wow okay right so can you give us some information how this book could help us yeah the book has it's it's different from other books i've written it's okay. i use a what i use something called inductive um story writing okay and that is you you when when i go into a chapter it kind of builds up to an idea and then it gives you the idea after after some examples. It yes. doesn't just say, this is it. Here's some points about it. And here's yeah. a summary of what, you know, it's, it's different. So I, I, yeah. I tell about 50 stories and I use yeah. that as a way of illustrating mm -hmm. what leadership is and yeah. how you can yeah. use it to change your work environment for the better. Absolutely. So um, I read this book. Okay, and uh, it was nice. You had some interesting stories and uh, the names were changed for obvious reasons, but it, yes. it, was, it, was, it was a nice book, right? And um, it says about, uh, even you did cut some mistakes in the, when you were working years back, including me, right? So we all made yeah. mistakes and we learned, right? And uh, it's a good book for someone who is struggling. I would suggest this book for them to read because uh, it has some good examples. And it says, uh, like, don't make hasty decisions as well. And uh, yeah. yeah, 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 go ahead. You you make a really good point. And it's something I, I, I wasn't thinking of when I was thinking about this, the vi the video we were going to do. And that I is, I tell stories about myself and yeah. I tell stories, like you said, about mistakes I've made. By doing that, I'm illustrating the principles, one of, some of the principles of leadership. That is, yes. I'm being, yeah. I'm allowing myself to be vulnerable. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, letting you know that, hey, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. I'll still make mistakes. Yeah. And and I'll be open and honest about it, which is very yeah. important in leadership. Absolutely. Like we all make mistakes in life. Like, no, I don't think anyone of any one of us are perfect. Right. Yeah, yeah. And and mistakes is just another word for learning. Abs absolutely, 100 percent Right. So uh, can you describe one significant chapter? Yeah, and I'll I'll keep to this theme theme that we we're just talking about. I'm gonna yeah. talk about chapter seven. It's called okay. forging the links. Right. And 
Hey, can I share the first story that's in there? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so let me let me share the first story to give you a flavor, and, and it's the only story where I name the person it's about. Okay. None of, everything else, the names have been changed, and and this, and I I got permission, of course, okay. from him. Okay. This is about a guy named Randy Moon. Okay. And uh, he worked at this company that I was at. Okay. And I I, I walked in the building one day, mm -hmm. and I open up my email and there's a message saying that the executive vice president is has moved and no longer is in charge of your uh division uh -huh. he's now moved to this other one and randy moon's taking over i thought yeah oh i i know randy he's a really yeah. nice guy he's very quiet yeah uh but i've i've gotten to know know him over the years yeah and i get this other message that says at the end of the day there's this all hands meeting and if you if this is in the days when everyone worked in person and there's yeah. about 90 yeah. people in the department. So if you imagine this lecture hall, that's like, a um, um, I forget what they're called, but it's, it's just this big oval room okay. with, with all these chairs and he's up there. And Board typically, room. yeah, 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 yeah. What happens in these meetings, all hands meetings, is usually the guy in charge says, here's my vision. Here's mm -hmm. why I expect. And here's what I'm looking for from you guys. Yeah. Randy didn't do that. Wow. He did something totally different. He started talking about himself. He shared his history and how he's done consulting, how he's been uh, uh, um, in charge of HR departments wow. and all this stuff. But he told one story in particular that was fascinating. As a consultant, he went to Buenos Aires, uh, Argentina. Yeah, and yeah. and he, he was he went to the um, the, the client side and was at the client side, and and it was the end of the day, and they said, "Now, when you leave, be sure and take a taxi and go straight to your hotel, yeah. because yeah. there's kidnappers, yeah, and people yeah. kidnap and hold." executives and and yeah and whomever for ransom yeah and he gets in a he gets in a cab and mm -hmm. they're driving and he finds out he got in the cab not a cab but actually a kidnapper's card whoa he ended up he ended up being kidnapped yeah down there and and for whatever reasons they eventually they just let him go Mm. They dropped him off somewhere and, and that was it. Yeah. And, you know, I, at the time, I didn't think that much of the story. I thought, oh, that's, I mean, that's memorable. Obviously yeah. I yeah. put it memorable enough to put it in the book. Yeah. But yeah. here's the cool part. Afterwards, mm -hmm. walked out into the main hallway and there's these little groups of uh, where people are getting together and talking. I walked up to one of them and they're talking about Randy. They're saying, yeah. they're saying things like, man, he really I can't wait till he gets moves to our area and, and gets in his office. I'm yeah. looking forward to dropping by and talking with him. Yeah. He's really an, a, a great person to get to know. And I think that story that I just shared with you made a difference in in connecting with people mm. and the so linking linking the forge linking together people we do that by sharing our stories and yeah. not necessarily the best of what we do yeah uh, it's you know and and um with that there there's there's something else i talk about in the chapter that uh -huh. that goes that takes it a step further and talk about um amy edmondson okay she makes she makes a really interesting comment she says that we can observe behaviors yeah but we can only guess at intent yeah when randy shared his stories he mm. was sharing his thinking his mindset what he was going through and his message was now that i've been kidnapped yeah the small things they don't bother me anymore yes and i'm a, i'm i'm you know i don't you could have you could have a, a an emergency at the company where something's not working right it's still a small thing no one's gonna die yeah 
And and what what Edmondson says is that yeah, we we can observe behaviors, we can only guess at intent. Mm -hmm. If we don't explain to people we work with our intent, yeah, yeah. and what our and what we're what our thinking is for our behavior, mm -hmm. then there's gonna be miscommunication. Wow. Are you familiar with uh, Patrick Linciani? Um, no, not good. Yeah, he's an author. He wrote um he wrote a book called The Advantage. Okay. And in it, in it, in that book, he talks about um this idea of vulner vulnerability trust, vulnerability okay. based trust is mm -hmm. what he called it, which is pretty much the same as psychological safety. Okay. And he's he says, look. If you're going to be in charge of a team, yeah, you need, even if you're a team member, you need to be open and honest with people and yes. share things like, I made a mistake. I was wrong when I said that. Mm. I need help. Yeah. Or even, I wish I could learn how to do that as well as you. Yeah. And yeah. when you start to do that, other people start to do that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yes, and and with that, I'll, I'll share share what was something I learned from Simon Sinek, mm. and that's this. It's related to this. It's about work life balance. Yeah, in the states, people think of work life balance as uh, time. You know, mm. how much time you spend at work versus not at work, and you need yeah. to balance it out. And but yeah. that's not yeah. work life balance. Yes, work. Yeah. The real work-life balance is when you can, when your emotional state is the same at home or away from work as it is at work, You when you have congruency. And, and I'll give you a short example. If, imagine how you would feel if you had family members in the hospital who were um, in dire need of care, they're, they're at risk of dying. Yeah. And, and and just that imagine what that think about what that feels like, what you might be going through, and you have to go to work. Yes. And just how effective do you think someone would be at work if they were if their mind was elsewhere and they 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 have loved ones that may die any moment? What on? Yeah, they you know, you can't work. And Correct. So you have imbalance. You have a work-life imbalance. The companies that are really good at this would say, leave, go to the hospital, be with your family, take care of them because you're no good to us right now. And you're no good to yourself being here. It's not in your best interest and it's not in our best interest, but we will support you a hundred percent. And uh, a real, real story Home Depot, the the um, uh, retail chain, the home improvement retail chain. There's a, a guy named Dave Best. Okay. Um, his wife became sick with cancer, and they actually let him. They said, "We're going to give you a leave of absence. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue to pay you, but your priority is with your family." And he did that for so long. And then they said, um, she wasn't getting better. She's, they said to him, look, we're going to take the people that report to you and have them report to someone else. We're going to have you do um, other work, but it's up to you to do it. In other words, if things are really rough at home, you focus on home. And this went on for about maybe a year and a half, two years where he was in the situation where he wasn't working to uh, full time. He was spending most of his time supporting his wife who was sick. And she, she finally passed away mm. a while ago. In fact, I'm going to uh, the memorial service this Saturday okay. um, for her. They had one in Atlanta where, where he works and it was attended by all these people from home Depot. Okay. And now he's having one up here and all the people that used to work with him up in, in the area where I live, yeah. they'll be there and spending time with them. But the point is this, 
if we're in, if we're in a company, if we're executives, and we notice that people are struggling, then we need to have conversations with them, not conversations. Well, you need to do your work. No, what's going on? Why? Why? Why are you having some challenges? Mm. And if we're like Randy Moon, and we make connections with people, they would be more reticent to be open and say. I have a sick family member at the hospital and that would empower you as an executive to say, go be with your family. And they would appreciate you and the company when you give them that type of support. And that's what that whole chapter is about forging the links is making those connections and strengthening your teams through that. And it, it gives you an opportunity to, to become humble and being open and honest is about when you make mistakes, when things are wrong, it it relieves you of a lot of stress that you can mm. be like that. So that's why that chapter is so important where I talk about all those things. Yeah, spot on. Right. So when you say like people uh, first, they say something afterwards, they copy. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you on that. So few years back, I think that was in 2019. Mm-hmm. I, uh, because I used to get so much of calls that was, I was in the business travel. So what I did was I bought a Bluetooth. So it's easy for me. So I used to plug it in the ear when I get a call. So uh, one of my colleagues, he told me, no point wearing a Bluetooth, it's outdated. He told me, right? And, uh, so his uh, colleague also was not a fan of it, a colleague of mine, two of them. Within a month, both of them purchased Bluetooth and they also started using it. <laughs> right? So they copy. They do copy. Right? Yeah. And we model also. We are, we model behaviors and and people do learn from that. Absolutely. Just like they learned about Bluetooth, you know? Mm. So, yeah. So, Gary, um, I know we spoke about this, but like, how do you think reading it will change people's views? Because some people's views are, bit, are different. Yeah. So reading the book, what? how might it change your views? If you go in with the thinking I'm going to try some of these things that Gary talks about. And if you change some of your behaviors, it will have an effect. It it will change the way you view things. So what I mean by that is, you know, we talk about psychological safety. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to give it a try and see, I'm going to, I'm going to let people know uh, um, that I'm trying to become better at leadership. And I'm going to ask them to help me and and uh, point out ways I can improve on 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 leading, and give that a shot. And you, what may happen is because of the feedback of the people around that that works with that person, they may get positive feedback and strong reactions. And that person may say, "Wait a minute, I'm actually getting along with these pre- people." these teammates a lot better than I was before. This really works. So by changing your behaviors, it changes it. it, The the reactions you get will encourage you to do more of it and it will start changing your view. And you may find people that um, after they read the book and they try psychological safety or, or a vulnerability based trust, if you prefer that, that they they could become the biggest advocates for those those concepts because they find out this stuff really works and makes a difference. So that's that's how reading the book, when you try to do some of the, these things and you learn from some of the stories and you try to apply those messages to your own life, it could change dramatically how you interact and connect with the people on your teams, with customers, with the people you work for, uh, it it could change everything. Spot on. Totally agree with you on that. So um, could you summarize this book 
in one sentence. <laughs> Summarize the book in one sentence. Yeah. Okay. How about this? I'll give this a try. Mm. Leadership. Leadership is the glue that binds teams together. All right. How about that for a one sentence summary? Sounds good. Leadership is the glue that binds teams together. Yeah, right. it's a nice, nice metaphor. You think of gluing something and connecting it to another piece and it sticks. And metaphorically, that's what leadership is. It can it can connect people in unique ways so that they support one another and amazing things happen when that when that does occur. Sounds good. Pretty perfect. Right. So the final message to all our viewers, what would you like to tell who is watching this podcast? Yeah, this is really important. And it's something that that I think people should really focus on. And that is do not leave leadership development to chance for yourself, but for the people that work you work with. And here's something really interesting, Watson. It's it's yeah. this. People who start out in management as a soup, frontline supervisor or whatever, the last thing they think about is leadership. They're thinking about their technical functional capabilities and how they can use that to help the, the people that would report to them. And I was like that. I started out like that. I was uh, in the training departments and I focus on how can I do a better job at at learning and development, at at building uh, courses and helping the people that work for me be more effective at building courses. But if I if what happened tends to happen is that usually about seven, eight, 14 years in, people then once they've been in management long enough, they start paying attention to leadership. If we can get people to do that earlier and we can give them a nudge in the right direction to start thinking about leadership and not just the technical functional capabilities that you're so comfortable with, it could really enhance those teams quicker than if someone tries to figure it out trial by, by error and just kind of guess at how or I'll figure out how to manage and and what leadership is you know mm -hmm. yeah so don't leave it the chance and don't let people that if you're an executive don't let your management le uh develop themselves their leadership capabilities by chance either make something happen spot on right so wise words from gary right so also to all our viewers just remember Leadership is a continuous learning process. Definitely. It's not, it's not about, okay, I read this book, I got this degree, I got this master's. No, you need to keep learning. And leadership changes time to time. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Completely agree with that. Nicely said, too. Thanks, Gary. So, Gary counts over two decades of experience in leadership and uh, many other things as well. So there are a lot of things you can learn from Gary and uh, please check out his books on Amazon. So uh, some for some versions, the Kindle is not there, but the hard copy and the audio versions are available, right? So thanks, Gary. Thanks for taking time and doing this podcast with us. Watson, thank you for having me once again. I really appreciate this and I'm honored to be here. Cheers, Gary. Cheers.